Welcome weirdos, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma Abe and today we are doing a book haul. I'm so excited. Today's book haul is going to be all the books that I got from the Cincinnati Public Library winter book sale. So this is really exciting. I didn't get as much as I got in the fall book sale, but I still got a bunch of books and I'm super excited to show you. So yay, I'm super excited. As usual, disclaimer, I cannot pronounce things, so I will be mispronouncing things just like I did that word, and it's not intentional, so let's just get started with these books. I'm so excited. Like the last book haul I did with the Cincinnati Public Library book haul, I am going to be showing you all the books that I got on the first day I went, which was the Thursday, and all the books that I got on the second day I went, which was the Sunday, which was the members half off. And I am a member, so I got half off, which is super exciting. So the first books book is Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. This does have an audiobook, which, I mean, obviously it's one of those classics. And Honestly, I don't really know anything about it. I know in my AP European class in high school, we did have to re read snippets of it um, to talk a lot about how Europe was changing at the time. Yeah, but other than that, I don't really know much about this book, but I am super exciting. So it looks like, I'm just reading the back cover now, it looks like it's set after the storming of the Bastille. So it's set in France during the revolutionary time. So you know people are gonna be dying and that is super exciting. Not that dying is good. We had to read, you know, this first, this first um, chapter that set the scene, you know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of fool foolishness all of that, which was really interesting to me as a, what, how old was I? A 15 year old? <laughs> wow, that was five years ago. I never actually got around to reading this, so when I read this, this will be the first time I've read this. I just picked up a bunch of classics that I found, because they have this nice wall of just classics and books that are a dollar, so I was able to get this for a dollar, which, ooh. The next book I got is another Charles Dickens book, right? Yes. <laughs> And that is Oliver Twist. And I have not read Oliver Twist, although I should have. I really love the musical. <laughs> this does have an audiobook. I really enjoyed the musical, so I figured if I enjoyed the musical, I'm gonna enjoy the book. That musical just holds a very special place in my heart. I actually played Oliver once in Oliver Twist when I was like eight years old. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, so I just have lots of fun memories that connects to Oliver Twist, and I feel like it's about time that I read the actual novel, so let's do that. The next book I got is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and I have actually not read any of the Bronte novels, which is kind of a shame. Here I am, I've got my first one, I believe. Yeah, we're gonna go with this, our first one. <laughs> I'm super excited. This obviously does have an audiobook. Again, it's a classic. I don't really know much about Jane Eyre. I know that it is one of the best of the Bronte sisters books, especially Charlotte Bronte. I am really excited to dive into this. I don't know much about it other than what I read in the back cover and I don't really want to know more. I know my mom likes this. At least I think she likes this. I think she likes, what is it, Withering Heights? Yeah. Weathering Heights more, which I do not have and I have not read yet. So I'm just trying to expand my classics collection and also read a bunch more. I don't feel like I've read a bunch because the ones I've really read are like Shakespeare and Jane Austen and the stuff I had to read for class in high school. So awesome. The next book I got is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck and I have I got is of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, and I have read this. I had to read this my freshman year in English class, and I really enjoyed it then. Loved the ending. It was just so gut-wrenching. Anyway, don't want to spoil anything. I just really liked it, and when I saw this little copy for a dollar, I was like, okay, we're just gonna get it because it's a dollar, and I love Mice and Men, and there's not really much to say about it. It does have an audiobook. This book was really the first thing that opened my mind to the ethics in assisted suicide. It really was something that got me thinking and helped me form a lot of my current opinions that I feel about assisted suicide. Read it. It's so good. The next book I got is another John Steinbeck book. I really like John Steinbeck. I've really only read, you know, Of Mice and Men, but I really like his work. That's why I have the Grapes of Wrath 
here, so I have not read that one either, but I want to. But the next one I got is The Pearl by John Steinbeck. This also does have an audiobook, and this is probably the first John Steinbeck book that I had heard of and that really got me intrigued. I think I heard about it in, I'm not exactly sure when, but it was definitely elementary school. Um, and I was just like, what is this book? I should find it. And then I think I kind of forgot about it or forgot the exact title. And then I was, you know, researching John Steinbeck's work a little bit after I read Of Mice and Men. And then I was like, oh, he also wrote The Pearl. And I've been really intrigued by that and just never read it because I'm crazy. So now I have it and now I can read it. And this one, I believe, is like less than 100 pages. Yeah, 90 pages. So yeah, I was super excited to read this. I've had basically the entire plot spoiled for me, which is sad, but I'm still super excited to read this gut punch. Just Steinbeck can punch so much into a short little package that makes me so excited. The next three books I'm gonna talk about all in one because it's kind of uh, redundant to talk about each of them individually. And that is, I got some Series of Unfortunate Events books. If you don't know, I have an almost complete series of the Unfortunate Events book back at my home, and unfortunately, I we just, for some reason, did not have all of them. We were missing like five, and then we had two copies of the last one for some reason. So I've made it my like journey to find all of the books from the library book sale, and I got the last three that we were missing. We were missing two. So that is The Reptile Room by Lemony Snicket. We were also missing Four, and that is The Miserable Mill by Lemony Snicket. And we we're also missing Eleven, The Grim Grotto. And I have read, I never got all the way through the series, but I hope to one day reread it and then maybe one day reread it for my kids, because that's the whole idea behind getting all of the books is because I want to be able to read them to my future unborn children. I have read these two, but I have not read this one. One day I'm gonna have to power through, maybe I'll do like a reading bod or something of me reading all of the books, but I don't know when that's gonna happen. Definitely not within the next like six months because I've got too much going on. Yeah, I'm super excited to finally have a complete collection of the Series of Unfortunate Events and these all have audiobooks. All of the Series of Unfortunate Events books have audiobooks, which is great, and they are actually multiple different versions of the audiobooks. You can find some with full cast recordings, some with not, so there's plenty of options out there, which is great. The next book I got is a book that I love, and it's one of my favorites, and that is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I've talked about this book a little bit before on my channel, but I love it. In other words, it made me cry, and you know the ending, at least halfway through. This book destroyed me, in other words, and I didn't have a copy for myself, so when I saw this perched on the bestsellers list, and I was able to get it for what? Three dollars, and it's in such good condition, I was like, I have to get this, I need to get this, because I need an official copy for my collection, because this is so goddamn good, and I loved it, and if you have not read it, read it, and prepare to be emotionally destroyed. And I read this several years ago in high school, I think I was in my sophomore year, I really loved this, so if you have not read this, what are you doing with your life? Please go read it. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to read this anytime soon but I'm glad to finally have it to officially add to my collection. And this does have an audiobook if you are curious, and that audiobook is really good. I highly recommend it too. Oh, I also wanna mention, my mom and I read this at the same time, and we were like re-ending it at roughly the same time, at like midnight one night, and we were both in tears in separate bedrooms. I was in my bedroom, she was in her bedroom, and we were just sobbing, and it was terrible, but it was so good. Anyway, the next book I got was The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. Oh my gosh, how could I proclaim to be someone who loves to study evolution? You know, I'm an anthropology major, so of course I love to study evolution and science, and I do not have this book. What the heck, Emma Abe? How do you not have that? What is going on? I do not know. I am so hyper right now. I don't even know why. This book is one of the quintessential works discussing evolution, and oh my god, the amount of controversy this book has had over the years and still does today is insane and it has just 
really revolutionized the field of science and have not read it yet, and that is a problem, so I am going to read it eventually. I'll get to it. I have a ginormous TBR. But this does have an audiobook, so yay! We love accessibility here on this channel. Oh my god, my hair is stuck in my nail. That's because my nail is like, it's, uh, it's coming off. And I don't want to pull it off yet. Because <laughs> that'd be painful. I'm just really interested to see all of his discussions about all of the different animals on the Galapagos Islands. Because I know I've talked about this and I've had to learn about this. We didn't really need to read sections from it. Very good condition. And again, I only got it for like $3. Seriously, library book sales are the best. The next book I got is Speak by Lori Halsey Anderson. And that is because I read her newest book that won the poetry category for the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2019. So that's why I read that book, which is Shout, which I have, but it's over there and my feet are asleep so they won't work. In that book, they, she references Speak, which is this one. And I was kind of confused. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to get this because I really liked her poetry and I wanted to see what else she had and really understand those references and maybe re-reach out. And yeah, so I'm very excited. This does have an audiobook. And I don't really know what this is about. I don't really think it's a memoir like the last one. I don't know. I think it involved, yeah, I think it involves a teenager. Again, I literally picked this up because I liked Shout and I wanted to understand what people were referencing when they would say, oh, I am Melinda. Who the fuck is Melinda? What is her story? And this apparently tells her story, which I'm suspecting has to do with sexual assault. Not nice stuff. The next book I got is a thick one, thick boy, and that is Che, A Revolutionary Life, and this is all about Che Guevara by John Lee Anderson. If you could not know, I picked this up because I saw that it was about Che Guevara. Let's learn more about him because honestly the only context that I have for him is that I know he was like a communist leader in South America. In Spanish class my sophomore year of high school we had to watch a movie about his motorcycle ride that he did all around South America and that that's what largely prompted him to want to become a communist and fight for people who didn't have rights and who were being crushed by capitalism. I figured it's about time to learn more about this man and I just figured that if I wanted to be a scholar, you know, in this world, someone who likes to read and stuff, I should have this biography. And interestingly enough, I had been eyeing for Mm, about a year now, this graphic novel version apparently of this book, so maybe I might pick that up. There's about one copy left and it's $35, so I've been avoiding buying it, but maybe I will if I read this and I like this. And this does have a audiobook. We love that. You can tell because there's no sticker on Che Guevara's face. The last book I picked up on the first day is another biography and that is Mao the oh my god I can read the subtitle the unknown story by Jung Chang I saw this and I saw the spine and I was like oh, beautiful and then it was like then I noticed the name and I was like oh, Mao I need to learn more about Mao I just need to learn more about China in general because lots of different reasons I don't want to get into now that is completely separate from the fact that I'm going to be visiting there over the summer and I cannot wait so this also has a audiobook the main motivation honestly for getting this was it was beautiful and it's about Mao and I want to learn more about Chinese history and Chinese culture I'm actually trying to learn Chinese it's difficult more specifically Mandarin because I do not do Cantonese with the nine tonals. No thank you. I'm very excited to read this and I cannot wait and it is a brick but I am fine with that. On the first day I also got some things that were non-books uh, that were audiobooks. So I got three audiobooks and I just wanted to kind of show you them. I got the audiobook to the Devil in the White City which is pretty cool. I have the book. Devil in the White City. I still have not read it. Now that I have this maybe that will help but I'm super interested. H.H. Holmes, very interesting. I have, I'm gonna be getting rid of the box when I get back to my hometown and just putting, keeping the CDs. But yeah, I am super excited to read this. I'm so glad I have the actual audiobook now. My dad thinks I'm kind of crazy because I do buy the audiobooks when they're in CDs, but this was like a dollar, okay? 
don't blame me. Don't at me, don't anything. But yeah, I'm super excited to have the actual audiobook for this. Now, the second audiobook I picked up was Cleopatra A Life by, you cannot see her name, Stacy Schiff. And I have read this. Now I have the actual audiobook and I don't actually have the book with me because that is in my hometown because I've read it. Usually when I read things, the stuff goes back to my hometown whenever I go there next. I really enjoyed this and now I have the audiobook and that was a large motivation behind getting the audiobook. Now I don't have to rely on the library system to get me the audiobooks I need, which we all know I have issues with the library system in my hometown. The third audiobook I picked up is My Beloved World by Sonia Sotomayor. This is the third lady to grace the bench of the Supreme Court. I just want to know more about these amazing ladies who have worked on the Supreme Court. There's a really good book, if you don't know, called Sisters in Law. I read it. I had to read it in high school for my American government class, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it and it talks a lot about the relationships that these women had. Anyway, but at the time I did not have this book, this like physical book, and usually I only buy audiobooks for the books that I have physical copies of, but I was like, fuck it. I need more books about these women. The only books I have, you know, I have my own RBG section of my bookshelf. Like, hey, maybe we should expand. You know, we love RBG over here on this channel. We absolutely do. Stan her. Oh my god. I'm literally going to be talking about her in the speech I'm giving tomorrow at the filming of this video, which I have not really prepared for. So I'm very excited to have this book about Sonia Sotomayor. Now moving on to the stuff I got on the second day. You know, I really should rearrange my piles so not everything is right in one spot. I got more stuff on the second day because it's all half off, but I was also with my friends and they gave me a time limit of 45 minutes to be in there and out. I did it. I was out there for 45 minutes and these are the books that I got. I didn't get any more audiobooks or movies or anything because I didn't really want to search through that stuff again. I didn't really feel like I had the time and there was books that I knew that I wanted to get, so let's get into them. I went to the comic section because that's where the bathroom was. And I had to go to the bathroom when I got there, so I was standing in line in the comment section just perusing, and I saw this. This is a sticker that I tried to peel off and was not successful at it. And this is essentially more stories from the Heroes universe. I think each story lasts about like a page, like maybe two pages, but each one is very short. And it's the second volume, and each little story is written by a bunch of different people, so I. What the fuck? Did my roommate just get home? Dude, it's like almost. No, it is one in the morning at this point. What the heck? What the heck am I even doing up at this point filming this video? Oh, I know, procrastinating. That's what I'm doing, procrastinating. I love Heroes. Heroes Universe has a very special place in my heart. My brothers and I, we love it. So much bonding happened when we were little. Here are some of the featured stories on the back. So some of them I'm really excited, like the Haitian, what the heck? That answer was never given to us in the show. So I'm excited to hear more about the Haitian. So yeah, this does not have an audiobook, obviously, because it is a comic book, but I'm super excited. The next book I picked up is also from the comic book section. And that is The Art of Full Metal Alchemist by Hiro Arakawa. I don't really know how to de describe it, but it's really just the art that, that she did for Full Metal Alchemist and some of like the promotional materials. I will say like two summers ago, I went through this Full Metal Alchemist binge where I watched Brotherhood and the original, and I read all of the manga. So I kind of went on this FMA craze, and I'm trying to find an affordable copy of FMA, the entirety of it, um, the manga, because I want that. <laughs> this does not have an audiobook because the only like real writings in it are the little things that she writes on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. That's about it. But yes, I love Woman Alchemist and it's something that I look for every single time I go to this Cincinnati book haul and I found this and I was like, you know what? We're gonna do it and we're gonna buy it because this is the half off day. Why not? Bigger than my head. Look at that. Hello. Like most people on this channel know, I am doing a Goodreads challenge of reading all of the winners of the Goodreads Choice Awards. And one of those is a Rick Riordan book. It's in the Trials of Apollo series. So that means that I basically have to read all of the Percy Jackson stuff and all of the stuff leading up to that. So when I saw this, the Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan, I was just like, okay, I have to get this because it's Rick Riordan. 
and it's the Sea of Monsters. They didn't really have much more. They had like a bunch of different copies of like this and the Labyrinth one and like maybe one other. And I have the Labyrinth one, but I just don't have really the rest of the series. So now that I have been rereading these and realize how much I love them and how much it was stupid of me to not reread them all those years ago, I'm trying to find them. This does have an audiobook. Obviously, I read this last month with the audiobook. I got The Corpse Walker, Real Life Stories, China from the Bottom Up by Lao Yiwu and translated with an introduction by Wen Huang. These are really cool. It's basically the transcript of all of these interviews that the author had with all of these different people in China. This does not have an audiobook, but can you guess why I got it? Because I'm trying to learn more about China and I'm trying to learn more about Chinese culture and I'm so excited to go back. How many times can I say this in this video? Oh my god! Anyway, but this sounded really interesting to me and it sounded like a different perspective than you usually would get and it's uplifting voices that you wouldn't normally get to hear about in, in China or about China. I'm really interested to see this whole different side. I'm kind of hoping it has Behind the Beautiful Forever's vibes, which is something I read two years ago for class, which was kind of along similar lines where it talked about the slums of Mumbai. I think this will have sort of a similar spin, except that one was not transcripts. This one is transcripts. So I am very excited, although it does not have an audiobook. This next book is Delusions of Gender. How our minds, society, and neurosexism create difference by Cordella Fine. Apparently this is funny. It says so on the back cover. Gender is a fun thing that I'm trying to do more research about to help me through my gender journey. Also to help better educate myself, this does have an audiobook, so that's really exciting. Although it does has a different cover and I don't like the other cover as much as I like this cover, which is whatever. This is supposedly supposed to look at gender and our misconceptions of gender and how we understand gender and how gender is reinforced. Yeah, apparently it goes through and it breaks up the myth that we have as like people of a society and how those aren't necessarily true and those aren't the same across all cultures, which is so true. Talk to any anthropologist, God, they will tell you the same thing. I'm very excited to read this because gender is not a binary. This next book, I have a pile of my books right here. This next book is a book that I probably will not be reading anytime soon because I like emotional stability and that is Schindler's List by Thomas Kennelly. I watched Schindler's List one time with my mom. Oh my god, that is uh, hard to watch, to put it very lightly. It's a really good movie. Watch it, but it's hard to watch. I knew it was based on a book, but I didn't know the book was a novel. So this is a novel based on the real life experiences of Oscar Schindler. I don't really know much about him besides the movie. I'm very interested to see what this book has to say. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit disappointed that it was not nonfiction. Uh, I didn't figure that out until I bought it and I was adding this into my book catalog because yes, I have a book catalog. It's an Excel spreadsheet of all of 349 books that I own. This does have an audiobook. I think I will put this on my World War II slash Holocaust shelf and read it when I am ready, which is not now. Wait, okay, this next book is Dances with Wolves by Michael Blake. And for some reason, I can only find the audiobook for this on Audible which was annoying because you can find the sequel to this on Overdrive and other places, but for some reason not this book, which doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. This is the book that inspired the movie. This is fiction. There is a related reading section. Oh my god, my books just fell and it freaked me out. There is a related reading section. I have not watched the movie. There is this really amazing video that I cannot remember who made it, but it talks about Dances with Wolves and it does more than just a movie. It talks a lot about the follow-up history that revolves around the Sioux leading all the way up to the Dakota Pipeline. I think it's like history buffs or something. I will link it in the description. So if you are interested in hearing a movie review from a historian's point of view, watch that. It's very entertaining, very good. I'll link it in the description. Other than that, I don't really know much about this book. It does fall into the white savior trope, I think, which is inherently problematic. 
I would be interested in seeing the source material behind that. And I might explore some of the stuff from the future reading section. I don't really know. I don't want to make too many judgment calls until I actually read it. All I have is the like controversial stuff that I've heard about it. But I want to make up my own mind. Once I read this, you guys will know. All right, the next book I got should not be surprising at all if you've watched some of my other hauls on this channel. And that is I got Seven Skeletons, The Evolution of the World's Most Famous Human Fossils by Lydia Pine. I love human evolution. I'm sorry, I find it so interesting. I definitely do not own two books about Neanderthals. That's definitely not something that's so on the bookshelf behind me that you totally cannot see. <laughs> I thought that this book would be really interesting. Uh, it's going to talk about Peking Man, which is so interesting. Lucy, Piltdown Man, the Tong Child, all of these skeletons I learned about in my biological anthropology class and I found it so fascinating and that helped me to get really fascinated by this subject material. This does have an audiobook, which is awesome. Again, I'm just so excited that I found this book. I love human evolution and I'm so excited that it has an audiobook because a lot of the books that I have about this topic don't and that's sad. It makes me sad and I don't want to feel sad all the time. The next book is Easter, The Enigmas of Easter Island by John Finlay and Paul Bond. I find Easter Island something really interesting. I don't own any books on Easter Island but I find it a really interesting sort of case study about really humans abusing their environment and building these statues to the point where literally they're destroying their habitat where they can people cannot like live there i mean obviously people live there now but it, it got bad it was bad for a while where it was just all of the resources were gone oh i find it so interesting this does not have an audiobook so but it's a shorter book and i'm excited about it georgia lee from the Easter Island Foundation says, surely a must, a must for anyone interested in this remote island and its past. I find its ancient past really interesting and I find seeing how people have adapted to living there now very interesting. So yes, this one looks fun. This next book is a book I already own, but shh. And that is Eldest by Christopher Paolini. So if you've watched the previous video that I did on the Cincinnati Library Book Sale Hall, I go, I picked up Brissinger and Inheritance in this series. And I have Eldest in a paperback form and in Spanish. Now I will have three copies. Don't worry, I'm going to donate the paperback form. I just really wanted it to be nice and uniform on my shelf, having nice hardbacks and originally I was not intending on uh, buying this. I saw on the first day that I went that there were like a bunch of copies of this book and I was like, you know what? If they still have a copy of this by the time the last day rolls around, I will buy it because it'll be half off, well worth it. Oh my god, this is my favorite book from the series. I love Eldest. I don't know. I'm a really big fan of world building and learning about culture. Gee, I wonder why you're studying anthropology, Emma Abe. I have no idea. That's essentially the short version of why I got this book. And yes, this does have an audiobook. A person does the audiobook. I don't remember his name, but he does a really good job with all of these book series. And now I can no longer hear Sephira's voice and a different voice. It's always going to be that rough, gravelly thing. And I love it. And it's great. And I'm happy. This next book is a biography because what else would it be? And that is A Founder's Son, A Life of Abraham Lincoln by Richard Brooke Heiser. And this is a biography of Abraham Lincoln that I do not own. This is going to go straight on to my Civil War slash Lincoln shelf back home. If you don't know, Lincoln was sort of the first person that got me interested in learning about history. There's a very special place in my heart for Civil War and Debellum period, all of that, and Abraham Lincoln, because it really started and helped shape me into the person that I am today. I'm looking at my t-shirt quilt that I got over there, and literally I have a cut out of a t-shirt from the Lincoln home in Springfield, Illinois. One of my favorite places to visit growing up, so it's no surprise that I picked up this biography. Really, it just seemed like a biography that was interesting and looked that it might have an audiobook, and it does, so that's awesome. And it just seemed like a biography that I could get my hands on that wouldn't be super overwhelming in this multi-volume set that I have with some of my other biographies of Abraham Lincoln, so I kind of wanted one that was more smaller and more digestible 
and not like 500 pages. <laughs> the next book I have to show you is Genghis Khan and the Quest for God, How the World's Greatest Conqueror Gave Us Religious Freedom by Jack Weatherford. So Genghis Khan is very interesting to me. I don't own any other biographies of him, but I hope that changes. And one of the things that people don't know about him is that he really created a lot of religious freedom for the different places that he conquered. I also find Mongolia just a really, really fascinating place. I don't really know much about this book. This book does have an audiobook, which is great. I'm very curious to see how he was able to implement religious freedom while still doing uh, atrocities and murdering a bunch of people and having lots of babies. I don't know. We'll see. This is very interesting. Finally, we've come to this book. <laughs> and that is... My Beloved World by Sonia Sotomayor. So I said that when I bought this, I didn't have this. Well, I found it. I was in like the law section or like the judge section of the book sale and I saw this and I was like, I literally just picked up that audiobook a couple of days ago so I need to pick this up. It does have the audiobook. I'm very interested in learning more about Sonia Sotomayor. I don't really know much about her. I know that she was the third female justice to serve on the Supreme Court, which is a shame. There should be way more by now. Come on, it is 2020, people. Anyway, I'm just so curious to learn more about someone who is not Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> as much as I love Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I want to try and branch out just a little bit. I love the back cover. It just has all these family photos, and I think it's so cute. Anyway. Okay, last book. Can we handle this? I think we can. And that is The Man Who Touched His Own Heart, True Tales of Science, Surgery, and Mystery by Rob Dunn. I don't know anything about this. I saw the title and I was like, that sounds interesting. This does have an audiobook. See, there's no sticker. I'm very excited and very curious. And I mean, it, there's science in the subtitle. So I was like, yes, I'm hoping that this focuses more on the human body and human anatomy because that would be so cool. The human body is so fascinating. The amount of things that we don't know about it is astonishing. I'm really excited to read this. I don't really have much else to say about it. Oh, I just read the inside sleeves. I think it's going to talk about blood transfusions and heart transplants. That sounds really interesting to me. I find blood transfusions to be interesting in the history and the whole start of that. So interesting. There's a whole Stuff You Missed in History class episode about it. I'm going to link that in the description below. Stuff You Missed in History class Stuff You Missed in History class is just a great podcast in general that you should check out. Whew, I'm tired and it is definitely past two in the morning and I need to go to sleep and practice my speech one more time. So we're going to wrap this video up real fast. I'm so glad you guys listened and hopefully you like the books I picked. Let me know your thoughts on the books that I got down below. I hope I get enough sleep tonight and I wake up early enough so I can practice my speech one more time. It's fine. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Do all of the, you know, normal stuff. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Yeah. Bye. Ooh. My nail got caught in my hair. And I feel like an old lady. <laughs> my feet are officially falling asleep. That is not fun. Okay. Stretch out my back.